Hello, welcome to the channel and thanks for watching. And we're now on to the fourth and possibly the best great unclean one I've painted on the channel. Not the best because the paint's keen, although it's all right if you watch to the end, but the best I think because of the model. Now this is the discontinued Forge World Grey Unclean one. You see here doing a spin round, a lovely model full of loads of bits of character that I think make it better than the plastic one. So it's not a decision to discontinue it by Games Workshop, but I'm sure they have the reasons. Now before I ordered it, I had no idea what size this was. I thought it was actually bigger than a normal Grey Unclean one, but it's not. It's about the same size. Again, I ordered it uh, from eBay, second hand, uh, unbuilt, cost about the same as the plastic ones. I'm not sure what the original retail cost was, but it is a fantastic model. So if you're a Nurgle player and you can get your hands on one of these, I really would suggest you do so. It's a fantastic model. Now I'm starting it off slightly differently to how I've painted my other great unclean ones on the channel. In those ones, I did the metallics kind of near the end. Starting off the metallics first with the gunmetal. Uh, colour from Vallejo here and really there's no right or wrong way of starting off a model um, you know you can start with metallics you can start with standard colours it really doesn't matter it's all about how careful you are when you're doing it obviously metallics it's probably hard to cover over uh, because we're doing a speed paint kind of scheme here doing a contrast paint so if you make a mistake with those metallics it's going to make this stage difficult so again just be careful now all the colors are at the top left of the screen but what i'm working on here this is a contrast paint scheme mostly so i've undercoated the model black and then with a wraith bone spray over the top and then putting these contrast paints directly over that and that then does all the shading highlights all that kind of stuff so i've done the skeleton hoard you can see there now my methodology as I'm working, you'll see that the skin is kind of half done. Now, a lot of models I will advocate doing all of one colour, then all of the next colour, then all the next colour. But on a big model like this, using contrast paints, trying to play to the strengths of the contrast paints, that is that you put them on and they don't sort of instantly dry like normal paints do. Now, normal paints don't instantly dry, but they are a lot, a lot quicker. One of the benefits of the contrast paints is that they will kind of merge together into their colours. So working on the skin, as you can see here, gradually across the model means that when you hit an area that you want to do with the alternate color you can then use that alternate color and if you pick sort of semi complementary colors what will happen is those colors will blend together kind of at the edges so you can see here i'm doing the three sort of colors uh, you've seen the bone white i've now put that to one side because that was just a, a major area and i did do the horns and things at the same time we're there with the bone because you don't want the bone merging but with the other colors as i'm working along i'm using the mantis warrior green all over the skin when i get to an area that i want to use do the peeled apart flesh with a real deep wound i'm using that major's purple and with a shallow area where there's like a shallow pit or a bit of a wound on the model I'm using gullum and flesh and I'm working slowly over the model like this because I'm as I get to those areas I may be going slightly into the area I want to use the gullum and flesh on or the area I want to use major's purple but seen here with the gullum and flesh and then I will go into the gullum and flesh after cleaning my brush put that into that area and then maybe there's another patch here again I've noticed I've missed a bit and then back to that green to then carry on doing the rest of the skin and what that will do because I've taken three colors that complement each other quite well when they blend together you work across the whole model and you avoid those mistakes where you might have white areas you avoid filling those areas in and if you notice carefully on the base uh, around the back side you could see where I tested how these model the colors blend together on the model so as I'm working around I'm kind of covering every last patch of skin as I come across something that's different I'll figure out how I'm working on that and then do this so you can see on the on the tentacle here very very quick wet blend on this tentacle putting a bit of the the, the mantis warrior green up the stars of the tentacle then taking the major's purple at the top and then deliberately blending the colors together where they're still wet to try and make it look like the tentacles coming out of the skin uh, starting off one color and then transitioning into that major's purple at the top so it's a very different way of painting how i would normally paint models if you've watched the channel for a long time you'll know that generally i will paint every last bit of green on the model every last bit of say bone on the model every last bit of metal so it's a slightly different way of painting but really plays into the strengths that i think contrast paints have which is not just about the speed but it's also about how they merge together and you make the nice effects so into the stomach area here and on some of the thin kind of right, tubes and entrails i'm using the gullum and flesh color just to give a bit of visual difference i could have made them all the same color and that would have been absolutely fine but i wanted to just drop in something slightly different so again i went around the stomach you can see here as i'm working across the model and thought i'll come back to the stomach in a minute uh, and using one another different color here the volupus pink which is very very similar to the major's purple it's a slightly more vibrant slightly more pinky color 
but it just gives a little bit of visual difference. It's quite a large area with these the entrails and things in, so I didn't just want to use the Majos purple uh, into there. So I just picked another colour, but again, very, very complementary on that scale. And I will say as well, actually, the green that's around um, the stomach area isn't actually dry yet. So it's quite quick to cover big areas of the model. So you've, I've worked up the chest there and up onto the arms, and I stopped going up the chest and arms because I was about to hit areas where I would want the paint to still be wet when I get there. So I stopped went back to the stomach and then kind of worked on that and you can see there actually I've just gone over a small patch of the green that had gone onto the white and you've seen it kind of merge into uh, the colour there so you can see it was still wet and that's the advantage of doing it now if you're doing colours that you don't want to merge and um, you know very very different colours that wouldn't make sense to have merged together like the bone colour did before you would leave that a bit longer for it to dry or put a thinner layer on so it dries quicker now into the entrails, going back over the Volupus pink there because it dry, started drying a little bit, a little bit streaky. I wanted it to be a bit more vibrant. And if you do a second layer, um, you know, it will just bring that level up a little bit. So working all the way around the skin in these stages, stopping each point when you think you want to do those other bits with the sort of four colours now I've used of Volupus pink. So we're talking the Mantis Warrior green, we're talking the Gulliman flesh for the slightly injured areas, made us purple for the really injured areas and then volupus pink in the stomach now using a tiny bit with a very small brush um, of the bad moon yellow into the eyeballs uh, just again to match it in with the rest of the great and gloom really because they've all got sort of similar eye colors now it's detailing snake by leather on and around the sword now in the case of the sword here i am going to keep it really basic and all i've done is just painted it with that silver and the wash stage we're going to do next is what's going to make it slightly rusty and a little bit more nurgly You'll notice details I've skipped and didn't kind of show on camera. Uh, the tongue has been done volupus pink. Uh, we did like the, um, what you call it, toenails and things. We did that with that skeleton horde colour. Final uh, bit before we get to the wash stage of the non-contrast paints. And that's retributor armour into the kind of skull kind of symbols into uh, the back of the sword there. You could put more brass on. You could do it with a rusty colour. You could do all sorts of different things. But this is what I've gone for for this basic colour scheme. Now spinning it around. The green looks incredibly vi uh, vibrant on camera. It is vibrant, not quite as bright as the camera is showing. I really need to work out how I can get the uh, tones to be a little bit more natural. So this is probably an hour or two I've left the model. It's going to dry out. You know, it was uh, a Saturday when I did this. I was actually off work, which was a very, very busy work week. So I'm very little painting on a night time. But this was morning on a Saturday. Uh, went out for lunch, that kind of thing, um, after doing uh, the contrast paints. And then in the afternoon, just kind of came back and did the wash stage ready for it to be left overnight to finish off on Sunday morning, just before doing the video. So this is a, a Seraphim sepia wash from his workshop. So slightly dirty the model down a bit, pull those tones down and kind of blend it together and make it a little bit dirty, um, which fits in nicely with Nurgle. Now, not a super, super dirty wash from the before. Now, while it was drying, I noticed I'd missed all the little maggots and things that are all over the model, uh, which isn't fine when they're on the purple bits, but on the green bits needed a bit of uh, work doing. So I took some Gene Stealer purple and just dropped that onto the maggoty areas. Now, when it's dried overnight, so this was at five o'clock this morning, uh, got up and did some finishing details uh, onto the model here. Now, all I'm doing on this stage is taking a little bit of bone white and putting a slight highlight layer onto the teeth and the horns. Now, you could get away with not doing this, but I just felt that the bone had merged in a little bit too much into the colours of around the mouth and everything. So I wanted just to pick that out and just highlight that a little bit. So edge highlighting onto the um, horns that come out of his head here. Now these were an optional build. So when you get the model, there's not many options on it. You can't do the arms or chest or anything different, but you get sort of two different sets of horns, uh, quite large ones like this. Or you can get some quite small stubby horns. And there are also two tiny horns that you can put as an option coming out the front of his head but I went for, for these larger ones. I just thought they'd give a bit more impact. Now, the friend of every single Nurgle player, time for some Nurgle's rot, and this is all the additional work I'm doing on the sword. I quite like it's come out rusty looking slightly because of the wash. Uh, I could make it more, I could do some more rust effects on it, but I quite liked how it looks, so a bit of Nurgle's rot on there. Now, here's a great tip for Nurgle's rot if you are, uh, again, a Nurgle player. If you've got any mould lines or any areas that you haven't quite made look right, this is what you can cover with Nurgle's Rot. So doing that on a couple of the back mould lines and doing that on a, and a few of the areas where I think it looks right for Nurgle's Rot to be pouring out the back and onto the base so that it matches in with the rest of the army because that's how we've tied it in. And that is the model complete, a fairly quick speed paint. Uh, I really like how it's come out. This is some darker shots because again, I can't quite seem to get the colour right when I'm uh, showing you on camera what the actual colours finish like. 
but this will fit in really nicely with the other great unclean ones so let me know which one you prefer i will do a group shot at some point with all four of them together maybe do a little video talking through the differences but yeah please with this addition to my nurgle army um, and again give it a couple of weeks and there'll be more coming so hope you like that like comment subscribe and i'll see you again